in this non-fiction analysis video, I'll go over rhetorical appeals. So, persuasion. It happens around us all of the time. Whether it's a student trying to persuade a friend to copy work, or a child trying to persuade their parents to buy them a new phone, or politicians trying to persuade us that there's someone we should follow. Persuasion is always happening. However, persuasion is a skill. That means it can be taught, it can be practiced, and it can be improved. Now, 2,300 years ago, the Greek philosopher Aristotle developed the principle of rhetorical appeals. He argued that there are three different ways we could persuade people for a specific purpose. There was logos, pathos, and ethos. And these three principles are still used today, notably by companies marketing their products and politicians looking to be elected. The first one I'll talk about is ethos. Ethos is all about generating trust and credibility. Its goal is to convince an audience that you're someone worth listening to, that you're someone who knows what you're talking about, and that you're trustworthy and credible. There are different ways we can do this. We can use the testimonies and words of experts, or those whom the audience will respect. And we can cite our sources to make them seem more credible. The next is logos. The purpose of logos is to appeal to logic and rationality. Its goal is to convince an audience that what you're saying is true and cannot be denied. You can do this by presenting statistics, graphs and tables, examples, and of course, facts. Finally, pathos. Pathos is probably the most powerful, powerful of the three appeals, but it can be the most unpredictable. It relies on appealing to human emotion, essentially convincing an audience through the use of fear, guilt, sadness, nostalgia or excitement. Its goal is to get the audience to passionately care about what you're trying to convince them of. This can be done by telling a compelling story or a heartfelt story, or perhaps you could show striking images. Now, it's important to note that these appeals don't often work alone. In fact, quite the opposite. They are most effective when used in combination. Speakers or companies will often use a combination of the three in order to be the most effective at persuading their audience. Now, let's look at an example. Here I have an advertisement, a poster. Now, the first thing I want to do is I want to identify the purpose of the poster. Well, this poster is trying to get smokers to quit smoking. And if I look at the top of the poster, I can see in big letters that three months after I quit smoking, lung function improves 30%. Now, this is an example of a statistic. It's difficult to argue with this. These numbers are pretty black and white, cold and objective. Therefore, through using this statistic, through using this fact, I'm more likely to believe. It appeals to my rationality and my intelligence. Underneath this, we have an image. It's a woman lying in a hospital bed with a breathing apparatus attached to her face. It actually kind of scares me. And if you look at the banner, it says, but right now, you're one day closer to getting this smoking-related illness. It's talking directly to me, telling me that I could be the woman in the, the hospital bed. Again, this scares me. It appeals to my emotions and thus makes me care about the advertisement. It's an example of pathos. Finally, if we look at the bottom, we can see the citations of two uh, experts on the matter. For instance, the Public Health Authority. Now, it's difficult for me, again, to argue with these experts, these people of authority. It makes me believe the poster and trust the reliability of what's being said. This is an example of ethos. Now, as we can see, the poster becomes most effective by utilising all three rhetorical appeals and not just one. Now, when looking at a non-fiction analysis, where do we discuss rhetorical appeals? Well, they come in level two. We can discuss the efficacy, the effectiveness of the identified rhetorical appeal in level two. At level one, however, we can talk about the rhetorical devices, images, style, layout, or lexical choice that is used to create such an appeal at level two. Finally, at level three, we can discuss the purpose of the overall text and how everything is used to generate such a purpose and, it's, and discuss its effectiveness. 
The three rhetorical appeals often work together. There's logos, appealing to logic and rationality using facts and statistics. Pathos, appealing to the emotions. Use striking images or compelling stories to do so. And finally, ethos, appealing to the authority, a sense of authority. Use expert voices and cite your sources. Finally, when discussing rhetorical appeals, you can put them in level two. Thank you.